You saw the thumbnail of this video, right? Well, this lens right here, it says that it's a 50 millimeter, but it's not because I don't have a 50 millimeter. The last time that I used a 50 millimeter was back in 2006, I think, because 50 millimeters are useless and stupid. I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating just a tiny little bit, but let me explain why I think that the 35 millimeter beats the 50 millimeter. I don't just say that to trigger all you 50 millimeter fans out there, okay? Okay. <laughs> And why am I making this video? Well, a few weeks ago, I uploaded a short in which I explained that in my opinion, the 35 millimeter prime is the most versatile prime lens. The best prime, period, in my opinion. But then, of course, in the comments, a bunch of people started saying that the 50 millimeter, the nifty 50 is the best prime lens and the most versatile one. And some of them even told me that I don't know what I'm talking about and I should go myself. You're blocked by the way. But anyway, the thing is, if you prefer the 50 over the 35, that's fine. I'm not gonna tell you that you're wrong. And you know, the 35 millimeter, even though I absolutely love it, it's not perfect. No lens is perfect. No camera is perfect. I'm not perfect. Even though there are rumors going around that I'm getting pretty close. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not perfect. Trust me, I'm not perfect. But I'm deviating. Uh, where was I? Not perfect. So yeah, first let me say something negative about the 35 millimeter. So the 35 millimeter usually gets categorized as a wide angle, even though for me it's not really a wide angle. I see it more as a standard focal length, like a 50 millimeter. And then anything wider than a 35, that's a real wide angle in my opinion. But anyway, that doesn't take away the fact that Yes, a 35 millimeter, if you take a portrait of someone and you go really close to their face, it does distort their face just a little bit. Not as much as a 24 millimeter because a 24 millimeter makes you look like this, right? But a 35 also distorts faces a little bit. Now, some people for some reason think that it always does that, but it's only if you go really close to their face. If there's enough distance, there's no distortion. And also that little bit of distortion is that a bad thing? I think it just depends on what kind of photographer you are. If you are a fashion photographer, then you probably don't want any weird distortion of faces. But I'm not a fashion photographer. I'm more of a documentary style photographer. So that little bit of distortion, whenever I take a portrait, a close-up of someone with a 35 millimeter, it doesn't really bother me. Take these photos, for example, close-up portraits, there is some distortion of the face and yeah, they would have looked different if I would have taken them with a 50 millimeter, but I don't think that it's a problem, that little bit of distortion. And also, in most cases, you could even fix it in Photoshop if it really bothers you that much. And the same for video, that little bit of distortion when I go really close to someone's face, it doesn't bother me. And I know what some of you are thinking now, why don't you just use a zoom lens, you know, to solve all those problems. But that's because I love shooting in low light. Like I said, documentary style. So I really need those wide apertures that primes usually have. 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 also, but in my opinion, too expensive. And that's really the key here, right? What kind of photographer are you and what do you prefer? A 35 millimeter just fits my style better than a 50 millimeter. It's that simple. I'm noticing that my stupid Sony is focusing on these two people on my t-shirt here. God damn it, Sony, I thought you were more advanced than that. This is a t-shirt, this is me. Okay, anyway, deviating, again, where was I? Mm, my notes? Okay, so yeah, for my style, the 35 just works better. It's more versatile and I'll tell you exactly why. I'll give you an example. So I used to shoot a lot of documentary and travel documentary projects. Projects that get you in situations where you don't have time to switch lenses all the time. And you're also switching from outdoors to indoors. So bright light to low light all the time. And so for those projects, I really need one lens that can handle all of that. So I don't have to switch lenses all the time. And in my opinion, a prime lens is the best choice when you're shooting in low light because they have those wide apertures, but a 50 millimeter just doesn't work for me. Outdoors, a 50 millimeter is fine, but indoors, not so much. Because you see these photos, all these photos were shot with my back against the wall or against something else. So a 50 millimeter is just not wide enough for those small spaces. 
and the 35 millimeter is. So most of my documentary projects were shot with a 35 millimeter and nothing else, just a 35 millimeter. It was glued to my camera. A 35 millimeter 1.4, for example, can handle indoor low light. It's just wide enough to get those indoor shots in small spaces and it doesn't distort faces too much. So it can also handle portraits just fine. You know, the thing is, in photography and also videography, you hear people say a lot of times, you have to zoom with your feet, use your feet, move around. And it's true, but indoors, moving closer to your subject usually isn't the problem. You know, if the frame is too wide, you just move closer. But moving backwards, that usually is a problem because there's always gonna be something in the way, the wall, a couch, whatever. And that's what makes the 35 millimeter so versatile. It's just wide enough when you're with your back against the wall to get the shot. And a 50 just isn't, in my opinion. Those are the key words of this video, in my opinion. And you might say, why not use a 24 millimeter? Well, first of all, because the distortion of faces when you get really close, but also, you know, for example, when you're shooting in a hospital, you have to go really close with a 24 millimeter and you don't want to get in the way of doctors or something like that. That's just an example. So a 35 is just long enough that you can keep your distance just a little bit and still get the shot. Does it make sense? Wow, I'm talking way too much, I think. I always get that when I record a video. I don't know why. I think it's because I wanna say so much and then my brain gets overstimulated. But okay, I have to check my notes again. I'm sorry. Uh, where was I? <laughs> God damn it. Okay, yeah, it's the end of the video. That's it. That's why I think the 35 millimeter is more versatile than the 50 millimeter. It's simple. It just fits my style better. But that doesn't mean that it's the best option for your style of photography. Just use the best tool for the job. Whatever works for you. There is no perfect lens, but if a lens causes you to miss shots often, then it's probably the wrong lens. And then maybe think about switching to something else. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna like decompress now. See you in the next one.